Hi, welcome to the Voice of Apache. I'm Rich Bowen. Several years ago, I did an interview with Nurajan about API 6 while they were incubating. This interview is from Community Over Code in Bratislava with Novendu, who talked with me about how the project has come along in the last four years since it graduated and about what they're working on now and how you can get involved. Uh, I'm Naveen Dupotegat. Uh, I have been working with Apache API 6 for almost three years, uh, right now as a committer. Uh, initially, I was focusing more on the documentation side of API 6, and I was working with API 6 users, understanding what their pain points were and making sure that all of these reflected in the, in the product as well as in the documentation. It's really great to be at Community Overcode Europe, and I just gave a talk about API 6 at the API and microservices talk, so yeah, excited to be here. So Apache API 6 is an API gateway, and in general, an API gateway sits between your client applications and the APIs your clients consume. So it sits between your clients on the one side and the APIs that you are trying to serve to the clients on the other side. And it, it does stuff, uh, fundamentally it does, what it does is uh, it takes your client's requests, forwards it to the uh, respective clients, and it takes back the response from the server and gives it back to your clients. And on top of that, it does other stuff like uh, fine-grained traffic control, authentication, a centralized point for authentication, a centralized point for monitoring. It adds security features on top of it. So it does all of that. And Apache API 6 is built on top of Nginx, which itself is a, a very mature project, and it has been around for a long time. And uh, it solves a lot of problems that Nginx has. When Nginx was created, like it was quite better than the alternatives of that time, but now like almost 20 years has passed and we are in search for something better and uh, API 6 does that. Uh, Nginx lacks hot reloading, even though it says it does hot reloading, but there is definitely a downtime. But most modern applications cannot afford that downtime. So API 6 is a layer on top of Nginx. It is based on a separate build of Nginx called OpenResty. And, uh, and yeah, it does a lot of these things much better. And over the years, uh, I think uh, since your last interview with an API 6 committer probably, API 6 has grown a lot. It has received a lot of adoption from around the world across all industries like uh, places where uh, downtime and security are critical, like banking companies, and uh, even uh, in places like uh, electric vehicles, where, uh, where there is a huge amount of traffic that needs to be handled, and it needs to be handled really well. So, yeah, API 6 has been finding its way into these mission critical applications. Recently, I think. A lot of companies are realizing the bottlenecks they face with tools like Nginx, and they are creating their own solutions out to replace Nginx. So recently, Cloudflare announced a new project called Pingora, which essentially replaces their Nginx, uh, how they use Nginx within Cloudflare. But most companies can't afford to do that, because unlike Cloudflare, where uh, Nginx was critical to their uh, their business offering. Most people use Nginx or most people use uh, another reverse proxy solution as, as a tool to aid their business use case rather than the business use case itself. So for people like that, uh, they can't afford to build something uh, in-house. They can't afford to build something on their own. So API 6 is a good middle ground between uh, tools like Nginx, which has a lot of limitations, and building something of, on your own. So, so we are constantly faced with new use cases. We are constantly faced with new integrations where people are using API 6 in really novel ways. And API 6 has a plugin architecture which allows API 6 to be extended indefinitely. So we are constantly working to 
improve the plugin ecosystem for API 6 to ensure that uh, more people can use API 6 out of the box, more people have the plugins they want. And we are also uh, testing out API 6 in other environments. So Kubernetes has been gaining a lot of adoption recently. And my talk yesterday was about using API 6 within Kubernetes and uh, making sure that API 6 interacts well with the Kubernetes APIs. So we are also working with uh, Kubernetes 6, like uh, there is a Kubernetes 6 that is interested in creating a unified API uh, to handle traffic between uh, from outside the cluster to inside the cluster. So there are projects like the Kubernetes Ingress API and the Kubernetes Gateway API, and we are very much involved in those projects to uh, help people use API 6 in a Kubernetes native fashion. So there is still a lot of room for improvement. There is still a lot to do in terms of API 6. And as much as I think like uh, building a complete project or like reaching the final goal uh, is possible, that like there is still there are there are always room for improvements in terms of improving performance in, in terms of uh, fixing issues in terms of like uh, filling that gap. There is always something that needs to be done in, in the project. Uh, itself, it's a broad project. So even though primarily we use Lua, since API 6 is built on top of OpenResty, we use Lua to program the API 6 core. But there are also other projects uh, that, that are uh, uh, orbiting API 6 that uses different languages. For example, the Ingress controller project, which works with Kubernetes, is written in Go. So if you are a Go programmer, if you are interested in working with the Kubernetes API, then that is definitely something for you to consider. But we also have plugin runners in all sorts of programming languages. So we have a Java plugin runner for people who are in the Java ecosystem to use API 6. So if you are a Java programmer, you can definitely contribute to the Java plugin runner. We also have Python plugin runner. So we have all sort of stuff. And we are also uh, trying, like testing out the waters in WebAssembly. So we are uh, working with some WebAssembly projects to, uh, to enable people to write plugins uh, in any programming language and basically compile it to a WebAssembly binary and then run it inside API 6. So as a programmer, I think there are a lot of areas where uh, you can contribute to. Uh, but we are also focusing a lot on non-code contributions as well. So uh, I am I'm, I'm a very strong advocate for non-code contributions because I primarily believe like uh, open source itself is becoming ubiquitous and like uh, the contributions needed to sustain open source projects uh, no longer like uh, it's no longer limited to just code contributions you need to have like uh, other contributions that that are equally uh, impactful uh, that are equally uh, helpful in sustaining those open source projects so we are quite active on the mailing list we are quite active on the slack channels so even as a user uh, you can help the project by just being testing and being vocal about the issues you are facing, being vocal about the features you want. So uh, even if you like uh, make a well thought out, a well written issue, it is quite helpful in, uh, it's, it's quite helpful for API 6 maintainers. And advocating for the project itself is a, is a great way to contribute because uh, API 6 is primarily uh, built by people in Asia. So there is a lot, there are a lot of people who don't know about API 6 from, the other, from other parts of the world. So talking about API 6, spreading the word, giving workshops, giving talks at conferences uh, is definitely helpful for, to the project. Working in the documentation side is also quite helpful. When you have users uh, who don't really know English, uh, some, uh, 
it might be helpful to translate those doc the documentation to let's say mandarin or uh, spanish so so that the project is accessible to more people so those kind of contributions are quite helpful so if you are someone who speaks two languages that that can be translated uh, then definitely those contributions are quite impactful the community aspect of uh, non code contributions is also like uh, quite useful because we need people in the api6 community who brings together others and let's say run they run community meetups they run workshops all sort of stuff so people who are doing that people who are rallying up the community they are also uh, quite impactful and uh, we have a dedicated page in api6 uh, which is under a com the community section where we basically talk about all the other ways in which you can get involved in api6 uh, as a non code contributor so yeah if you go to api6.apache.org i'm sure you'll be able to find it well thank you so much thank you yeah. thank you